here watching a Gospel Project Sunday School lesson from Redbud Baptist Church. Redbud Baptist Church is located at 801 Slide Road in Lubbock, Texas, and Sunday School it starts at 9.30 a.m. every Sunday. Grab your Bible. Let's study together. Hey, Red Bud. Hi, guys. <laughs> We're just glad you're here with us. We're doing the Gospel Project this morning, or this afternoon, or this evening. You know, who it knows? Does, it's kind of multiple <laughs> choice depending on when you uh, open up your phone or go to YouTube, which, by the way, is youtube.com forward slash Red Bud Baptist Church. And anytime you do that, it'll take you right to our Red Bud uh, YouTube page. And that will allow you to get to any of the lessons that are out there and the past lessons. It'll even have the live stream that's coming up. It'll be like in the upper corner of that. So if you don't get any links or something like that doesn't happen, go ahead and be sure to type in youtube.com forward slash Redbud Baptist Church and you'll get to our uh, YouTube page and be able to see all the stuff that we've been putting out every single week so you guys can keep up not only in the gospel project and explore the Bible but also our Wednesday night meetings and the streaming we do on Sunday if you can't actually participate during that streaming or if uh, you don't have the link at that time you can go out there and you can see the streaming usually on the front of that page anyway just FYI something that uh, you know you guys something new yeah well it's not new but it did allow us to get a name on there that's easy to remember instead of all these digits and gadgets and everything like that 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 people can't remember so that's because you guys have been subscribing to the YouTube channel for Redbud and we got over a hundred so they allow us to have the Redbud Baptist Church as the forward slash to youtube.com and that makes it a lot easier to mm -hmm. spread it around so spread it around to friends you know if you can't invite them to church on campus and buy them to church online and uh, the most thing we want to get here is, is getting people to the gospel and the gospel changing their heart because Christ's working in them. And then, you know, there might be a chance that eventually they'll come and participate and be an active, uh, not only disciple, but discipler. And, you know, we're just trying to get that all going from evangelism to the to the, being a disciple and then to, you know, discipling others. And that's just that cycle we try to get through, make uh, mature and mobilize our uh, disciples. But anyway, we're glad to be here. Sorry for that long introduction. But, uh, <laughs> But we just love the fact that you guys are tuning in and you're obedient to this and you're still, you know, participating one way or another in Red Bud Baptist Church. So this, again, this Gospel Project, we're in uh, Session 20, well, it's actually Unit 24, Session 3. And we're talking about a little known fact in the Bible, something that people never talk about this week. <laughs> never even heard of it before. Something about Jesus walking on water. You know, wow, that it, it, that's that that's never referenced anywhere, used anywhere. Of course, I'm have a little bit of tongue in cheek going there. I'm kind of teasing because this is one of those things that people remember in the Bible. Yes, uh, Christians remember the crucifixion and the resurrection because it's important. And, and we hear, you know, around Christmas time, Christian, you know, Christians and and probably not Christians will will celebrate Christ being born. Right, so right. we have the baby and the miracle and Mary and Joseph and stuff like that. But probably soon after that, we're going to be pretty close to talking about Jesus walked on water. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's uh, a pretty cool thing going on. You know, there's times I wish I could walk on water, and there's times I just don't want to be close to water. So, <laughs> anyway, go ahead and grab your donut, grab your coffee, please grab your Bible. And join us in this Bible study. I'm going to pray. I'm going to turn it over to Holly here at the beginning, and and she's going to get us started in this discussion. I'll pray for us right now, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord. We come together in fellowship and teasing, and and joyful stuff to be together, even if it's through the internet. But Lord, we want the Holy Spirit to to teach this lesson. We want the the Holy Spirit to be on the hearts of those out there right now. And if there's anyone in our audience right now that does not know you. Let this be the last moment of time that they don't know you. Lord, let this message be a way for not only people that are Christians and believe in you to go further in their faith with you, Lord, but for those that don't know you to have faith in what you did on the cross for our sins and to have faith 
and following that up by trusting you as their savior. Lord, thank you for the blessings you give us, the ones we see and we don't see. Lead this lesson. Let me and Holly stand behind what you want taught. Let your words be spoken and not ours. For in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, amen. thank you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so James, have you ever heard someone say, keep your eye on the ball? Every once in a while, especially around, you know, the Little League, you know, that was our beginning <laughs> thing, you know, Babe Ruth baseball. Yeah. Uh, a few times I didn't keep my eye on the ball and either got, you know, struck out or got hit by the ball. That will happen. <laughs> that's right. So it's a phrase that's used to try to keep, remind us to be focused on a task. Yep. Okay. And we're going to see today in our lesson what happens when Peter takes his eye off the ball and what the consequences of that are. So, James, what are so, some... So they had baseball back in the day? No. no. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe. We don't know. <laughs> it's I just it not recorded in the Bible. <laughs> so, yeah. But it could have been. Could All have right. Been. So what are some circumstances that distract us from focusing on Jesus? Well, um, I, I think some of the things is we get embarrassed certain things. Like, let's say reading the Bible, and I know some of us get behind in daily reading the Bible, which mm -hmm. is one of our ways of understanding God, uh, what God's intention is in our life, how we're supposed to walk as, as believers. Right. And uh, we get a little behind or we get away from it some, and we, we're kind of embarrassed to, to talk about that. Uh, sin, there's sin that we get caught up in, and sometimes we don't want to, um, one, face, it's not judgment to say, but, but we don't want to face uh, God. And, and the serious thing about that, the silliest thing about that is God already knows. <laughs> you know, he's always in that. <laughs> right. but, but we'll kind of stay away from him because we, we either, one, wants to stay in that sin, or two, we just don't, want, we're kind of embarrassed to admit it. Uh, we actually sometimes stay away from the, the church because we're afraid of what people might think because obviously no one in the church has ever sinned before or even in sin, you know, mm. and uh, of course we know God needs that. Um, temptations, in other words, yeah. uh, we're giving in to temptation. We may have a relationship thing going yeah. on, or husband and wife, that, some kids, or someone like in that. the church yeah. too that can someone cause we have yeah. troubles with the kid, mm -hmm. yeah, in the church. Uh, Just busyness, I think, is one one of the things we, we, I find we, is a distraction. We, we see a lot of health struggles that comes a distraction, mm -hmm. and and that's not saying that hey, you know. Anything, you know, there's sometimes you can't get to the church because you are physically unable to get to the church. Um, some people are in the coronavirus situation right now and they're focused on that. And I'm not saying that's not important. It is. There's, you need but to protect yourself. I think, James, since you brought that up, it's not being able to come to the church doesn't necessarily mean that your focus would not be on Jesus. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, just because you can't have that fellowship with other believers doesn't mean that you can't be spending that time focused on Jesus. Yeah, I think what I'm trying to more get into that case is the fact that, you know, so many things are done at the church. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. One of them's worshiping, obviously, and listening to the message and the direction that the pastor is trying to lead us, and Pastor Carlos does that. Uh, we're also there in kind of a small group situation. There's people that, that we're, that we're yeah. pouring into or mm -hmm. should be pouring into, and there's people that pouring in us, and that accountability comes with encouragement, and people that are, are, are checking up on us. So even in our Sunday school classes, you know, we're supposed to be reaching to people inside the class that we may know, people outside the class that we may be working with as, as a discipling person. And there might be also co-workers, friends, family, mm -hmm. yeah. neighbors, right. acquaintances that, that we're trying to pour into. But um, all of that, I think, is also part of Jesus's plan because you know he threw out the Great Commission and in that is finding people you know teaching them all he's commanded you know baptizing in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit and all that but basically or actually you know we're supposed to be doing this on on and on and and we're you know and that's exactly what we saw Jesus doing you know he was finding the people he was discipling them. He even had a real close three that he was discipling real close and stuff like that. And uh, we can get so distracted with being busy in the world right. that we forget these things. But to stay on top of being a, a disciple and discipling others, you have to be in the Word. You have to be in quiet time. You have to be in prayer time. Yes. 
you have to actually spend time with the Lord and allowing the Holy Spirit you know to work in your life by by you know actually following through so if we read the Bible and we don't um, do what the same is telling us to do then are we truly spending time with Jesus and the answer would be no because <laughs> we're really not we're gonna touch on some of those things as we look Oops, at the Bible sorry, study I didn't today mean to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but no. all right so we had to keep your eye on the ball which is that baseball metaphor and in baseball after three strikes you're out yeah how many strikes you get with God well let's see if he tells Peter that it's seven times 70 you know which was probably meant forever beyond mm -hmm. you know, of course obviously 490 or whatever you want to call it if you did the math but you know how many more times well I would say infinity yeah you're never out with you're God never out. okay because God's grace can cover everything so even those of us that don't have large faith it's still God's grace still covers us and no matter how many strikes we get we're still we're still in his hands yeah. so today we're gonna to be in Matthew chapter 14 verses 22 through 36 and it's an amazing story but even a greater confession um, there's about 14 verses here and it has Jesus walking on water Woo! we all remember yes. that Jesus walked on water yes that's awesome you know <laughs> but um, I think what's so cool about this once I actually started studying about it you know way back when I first read it or heard about it you know you, you mm -hmm. didn't do much there right but later on when you started reading about it and I don't mean now I mean years ago um, the fact that Peter decided hey I'm gonna get out of the boat and join you yeah. you know uh, can I do that Lord mm -hmm. and and you know and the Lord says come on out and you know uh, you know he, he was a fisherman and all and he kind of knows what's going on with water and stuff but to have that type of faith uh, and I know, you know, as, as a a follower of Jesus, that day, you know, was incredible. I mean, just yeah. to even step out of the boat, because you know, you had the other disciples in there, and they're like, "I'm not getting out of this boat." But, but I think it's really uh, incredible that uh, Peter's going to take that step of faith, if you will, and you know, and his confession that he's going to do with that. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. There's so many things that we can learn from this one little passage scene. Yeah. And it goes well beyond, you know, uh, Jesus walking on water. All right. So first, let's read in uh, Matthew 14, just verses 22 through 24. And I got that. It says, Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side, while he dis dismissed the crowds. Okay. After he dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray well into the night. He was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat was already some distance from land, battered by the waves because the wind was against them. Okay, so let's set the scene just a little bit so you know what's going on. So if you were in the study last week, um, the loaves and the fishes. Right. So, so Jesus had that just, just you know, completed that uh, time with this large crowd of people. 5,000 were fed. Okay, and so that's what it's saying when... He's telling the disciples to get in the boat and go ahead of him while he dismissed the crowds. Those are the crowds that they're talking about. Right. Okay. And so after that, um, he wanted to go and be alone to pray. All right. And uh, and then he, uh, but the disciples were on the boat. Right. So, so let's look at a few things that were taking place there because we know a number of the disciples were fishermen. So they were well aware of how... Things worked on a boat and how the uh, yeah. cycle on the water went and, you know, and all those and, kinds of things. E even okay? the fact that, you know, it's at the night time because we're saying evening right. and we know there's uh, other passages that's kind of connected to that. Let you know what time mm -hmm. they think somewhere between uh, three, three and six yeah, in the morning. In the morning. Yeah. You know, so, it's not odd for a fisherman to be out of yeah. a boat at mm -hmm. 6 a.m. because it seems like that's when the fish are biting, at least in my experience in that. Right. And then once the sun fully gets up they quit biting so you know they're out there early in the morning to fish so they're right. not that's not uncommon for a fisherman to know what it's like to be out mm -hmm. in the darkness now the the wind and the ray waves and things like that might be something that they don't always go against but I bet you they were familiar yeah, with that I'll as bet well. they were too and it's they didn't sit there right by the shore waiting for Jesus no they they it says they were out 
Um, there's different, you know, co uh, commentaries that say, you know, how far the distance was, but we're going to say, you know, three or four miles from the shore. Right, and, and I don't. That, and, and it is know. a few miles across this right. and stuff like that. But I don't think they're intending to be out there for that amount of time. Right. Uh, the wind's going against them, so I think they're struggling. So they're struggling to make progress right. in the direction that they Correct. needed to go. Correct. Okay. All right. So in this part of the passage, we also want to look at the fact that Jesus went alone to pray. Right. So we want to... Um, you know, look at that's just really important that we, as Jesus followers, that we take that time to go alone and be with the Lord. Right. Yes. And because if Jesus felt it was that important, yeah. then it certainly is for us as we follow that example. And here's some things that we kind of get caught up in. And, and other uh, religions, cults, or whatever will kind of mm -hmm. get us into this. Well, why would he be praying to himself? If Jesus is God, <laughs> why is he praying to himself? And we know that Jesus is the second part of the Trinity, which, of course, you won't find the Bible. This is how we describe God in three. Right. You know, God but the as Father, one. God the Son, and God the Holy so, Spirit. So mm -hmm. God the Son, the second one in the Trinity, is praying to God the Father, the first one. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the Spirit is somewhere involved in there as well, you know, as talking. But... Um, but it's also the fact that he's going out there in solitude to talk to the Father. Right. Now, Jesus, the the one who knows it all, the one that needs, you know, that shouldn't, you know, does the miracles, does the healing, does everything. We get and and, and you know, if he needs time alone with God, how much more would we as his disciples, exactly. human need to be have solitude with God. Right. Yeah. So it's just a very important thing. And I know I have a struggle in my prayer life sometimes. We were talking um, just the other night with uh, Carlos and Sylvia about prayer yeah. time. And, uh, you know, sometimes we want to do that quick, short prayer first thing in the morning, get it out, off, check off the list, yeah. just pray with him short, quick. I want to go to sleep at night. And, or, and we're done. Instead of that, that diligent praying consistently, uh, throughout the day and you know really with a focus on right. communication yeah. with the Lord but you know there's just a lot of things that come up in your life that causes you to be distracted or maybe you just don't feel um, that you know what to say or how to say it and so we've taught children for a really long time and we've raised two children and yeah. one of the things that we always told our children and it's true for any type of prayer is it's a conversation right like james and i are having a conversation right now with you okay with you that's right um but when you have prayer it's a conversation between you and god right and god understands you no matter how you word it um i know this may not be the very best example but uh the show uh, big bang theory uh -oh. when sheldon's mother takes them all to the church yeah. And then she said, well, let's put a little church in this church. And she's encouraging them all to pray. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Penny just comes to mind. She goes, what's up? <laughs> and, you know, so we don't, we don't like freak out when our teenagers maybe do that because, you know, they're, that's how they're conversating. Right. You know, that's their vernacular. And there isn't anything wrong with that because God knows them. And so not knowing how or exactly what to say or thinking that I'm not going to have the right words. Okay, none of those things should inhibit you from having that conversation with a God that loves you I think and the, wants to talk with the, you. The, the biggest thing we need to be talking about here is, is being diligent at it. Uh, it you, you, you don't know the Bible 100% anytime, but you won't know the Bible well until you start getting into it. And same thing with the prayer, you know, just like me and Holly, when we first met, I didn't know Holly well, I wanted to get to know her. We had to spend time together and you had to spend time together, but we had to be diligent. We had to play, pray constantly. Yes, there should be a time every day that we come together to be with the Lord. But honestly, we need to be praying throughout the day. We need to be dependent to him throughout the day. But the more you do it, the more you want to do it, yeah. the more you do it, the more comfortable you'll be with it the more you'll actually start growing 
being yeah. in it, you know. Yeah. And, and yeah, we, we can get there and we can read the Bible and we're going through our our um, reading the Bible in the morning maybe, or I don't know if you do that in the evening or what. And man, we got done with that 20 minutes of reading or whatever and we'll throw that, you know, two to five minute prayer in there, right? <laughs> and then we don't, we get up, go to work. But or you know get the rest of our stuff done for the day right. for that morning and we don't actually take that time to stop and let's hear what he's actually what's the response going to be whether it's through scripture right. or whether he brings up something in, in our hearts so spending time with him means you're going to spend time not only praying but listening as well right so, so if our goal is to act and look like jesus one thing that we're gonna we need to do is spend time in solitude with right. the Father in prayer. But then the second thing is we need to notice that Jesus also participated in the crowds. No. Okay, so he just got through with a crowd of over five thousand people. Correct. Okay, and so we need to kind of we were talking about this with the uh, Sunday school at night group just the just last week about the introvert and the extrovert. Right. So the introvert is totally happy with let's spend that time alone with the Lord and I don't have to talk to anybody. And the extrovert is totally happy with, I want to be in the crowds right. and, and witness and, and <laughs> that thing. But we have to be a little bit of both. Yeah. A little bit of both. And yeah. So, I mean, you know, I always hear the excuse that evangelist is for those evangelistic people. They're, they, they're given that gift. And there might be some truth to that. The other, some people may have a better gift or uh, seems to have a gift for reaching the lost or talking to them stuff like that and there seem to be people that have a gift for praying oh my god uh oh my gosh sorry so Nestor parker you know when you pray with mm -hmm. him you think you're right there in the throne room with god because that man knew how had it he was totally to comfortable and totally confident in his ability to communicate with the lord right but he's and been doing it, it for I know because he practices it. So all of us have a Sinester right. Parker in us. We just have to cultivate it. Right. And and so yes, there are some people that have better gifts or or, or made be the gift that spiritual gift for for the church. But that does not mean that that's the only person that's supposed to be doing it because it means that each one of us in some way need to be reaching people for the lost. Right. In some way need to be. Uh, spending time with the Lord in some way need to be praying Bible study you're not going to grow any whatsoever unless you're putting all these things together and if Christ was doing it when he was here on earth you know that's the example we're supposed to be following right. so we need to be doing it as well exactly. so, so whether you're an introvert or extrovert yeah, we can use that as an excuse but that's all it is an excuse right the extroverts sometimes going to be in crowds introverts sometimes you're going to be alone sorry and um, both of them work together because right. sometimes we see God working through the well, group we're with know, and we sometimes we see God working in our life itself God redeems all kinds of people right so so when you look at that you know he can use all kinds of people in all their different characteristics because he made you that way right so right. all right so the first point I don't think I actually said this was that Jesus is sovereign over life's circumstances and that's right. what we were looking at in in this uh, particular passage now how does prayer reflect one's faith in jesus's sovereignty so i think the the the, the best answer for this is saying you are lord yeah. i am trusting you to lead my life so i'm going to seek your will Right. Because if we're not seeking God's will, then we're going to put something else there. Yeah. I trust that I'm going to take care of myself and I'm not going to trust in you, Lord. That's you remember, if I'm not praying. Do you remember when Charlie, I don't remember what Charlie's issue was. I think it was healing from the migraines. And, uh, you know, he just suffered with terrible migraines about sixth and seventh grade. Right. And, uh, you know, one of the things we encouraged was for him to pray about it. And he said, I did. I asked God to, you know, and I said, well, you know, I asked God to heal me from it. And I said, well, do you ask him every day or every time you get a headache? And he said, no, I asked him one time because I know that he will take care of it. Yeah. And maybe that's not exactly how we should pray. You know, we should keep asking, 
um, and you know in seeking that advice but I thought it was a kind of just a cool picture of his faith that that he understood that God would handle it you know and that that he didn't have to pester him about it that he knew God was in control of that situation yeah. I mean he has power over all things right mm -hmm. and, and doing the prayer to him and seeking his will is just saying God I am trusting you and I'm putting you in that spot as the leader of my life my only king right yeah and you know so it's putting him in the right spot actually and that's yeah and and you're humbly submitting to what his will is in your life there you go all right so now let's look at the next uh passage of scripture and we're going to look at Jesus calls us to have courage and faith in life's circumstances all right. Yeah, we're going to be in Matthew 14, 25 through 31. You got that again? I got it again. All right. Jesus came toward them walking on the sea very early in the morning. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. <laughs> it's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them, have courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter answered him, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. And climbed out of the, climbing out of the boat, Peter started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus reached out his hand, caught hold of him, and said to him, You have little faith. Why did you doubt? I love this passage of scripture. There's just so many cool things going on in it. Um, but let's just kind of think about it from the disciples' uh, perspective. Yeah. They're in they're in this boat on um, turbulent waters with a great storm going on. Yeah. Okay, at it's really night. not funny, but I I, I, I can relate to this at you know? night. <laughs> yeah. So even though some of them are fishermen, it still probably was a little bit frightening. Yeah. Okay. So then they see a figure uh, walking on water okay and you know their minds have to make sense out of something new that they've not seen before right so 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 they come to the conclusion <laughs> this cannot be a person because people can't walk on water so they're they say it must be a ghost which yeah. obviously adds to their fear right and terror but then how many ghosts did they see? That's a yeah, wonder, you know. But I, there was a belief in ghosts, so right. you know, and spirits and whatnot. So okay, so they cried out because they were afraid. But listen to Jesus respond to them, which is our whole point. Have courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. How many times does Jesus tell us not to be afraid? A bunch. Okay, when he says it is I, he's using the same Yahweh oh, type correct. of phrase correct. that we heard from the burning bush when Moses approached it I am who I am I am yeah okay and so he's declaring again his divinity okay so he, now we see Peter Peter's response okay <laughs> Peter goes all right God if it's you command me to come out so you know we always think of Peter as the the one that you know uh, just you know, would run straight forward into things, you know, right. without so, so speak very, without bold, thinking, you know, but very bold, foolish. Rash. yeah, a foolish yeah. kind of behavior. Yeah. So he said, "Let's well, see you command me to come." And so Jesus said, "All right, come on." Yeah. <laughs> no problem for Jesus, right? <laughs> so Peter gets out of the boat, yeah, and he's walking on water. Now, to me, this is like super cool <laughs> that there's a human able to do this yeah. as well. You know, and, 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 it's, and it's not illusion. We're not having glass exactly, or any, any clear things exactly. underneath the so, water, and the water's still tormented. Yeah, you know, big old because waves it say and that wind the, blowing. That the and, storm has been calmed. Yeah, it just says Jesus is walking on this water. I mean, Jesus, just the fact that the boat's moving because the wind's pushing it around, yeah. and we're going to get out of the boat. Yeah. You, you know, just oh wow, just incredible. See, Jesus has no fear yeah. because he knows he has control over nature, but the disciples. The people in the boat, they have fear because they don't have and, this kind of control. And I mean, I realize they just saw, you know, the loaves of bread and the yeah. fish. They saw a miracle and stuff like that. But all of a sudden, it's like, okay, now I'm going to have faith that I can walk out. Right. But, but of course, he's going on Jesus saying, 
come to me. Right, exactly. But even to do that is an incredible step of uh, faith. So, for some steps, Peter is doing fine. He's walking on Boldly, water. yeah. But then he notices yep. the waves and the wind. And that's when Peter takes his eye off the ball. Yeah. yeah back to our baseball image here okay because he notices those things that are going on around him and he's no longer focused on jesus yeah and so that's when he starts to sink and i think that's what happens to people you know in everyday situations you know where jesus doesn't say that he will not that there will never be a storm but he's with us in the storm Right. But when we take our eye off of that, we often start to sink. Yeah, so knowing divinity uh, mm -hmm. in this scene, we're also seeing, you know, as Jesus is God, uh, courage and faith when we face circumstances. Right. And, you know, this is exactly, you know, that we're supposed to keep our eye on Jesus during the circumstances right. we're walking through. So we're seeing both of those in this, besides the fact that, wow, a human gets to walk on water too. Right. For exactly. a moment. Exactly. <laughs> But we, we don't want to dismiss this really important part because right. Peter, all right, so he took his eyes off Jesus and then he starts to sink, all right, which is what we would expect. When you take your focus off of Jesus, now you're kind of, you know, at the world's mercy. And in this case, at the storm's mercy for Peter. All right, but what we don't ever talk about this. I mean, I don't know how many times I've studied this passage and we don't talk about what Peter does next. He cries out to the Lord to help him. Right. Because he knows that's where his salvation is. Well, that's he knows where that's, his faith is and yeah. the reason why he got out of the boat exactly. in the first place. Salvation is so, going to come in a little bit. <laughs> well, well, I mean, you know, that he knows that's how he will be saved from the right. circumstance. Right, exactly. Okay. That's so, how salvation occurs. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, that i think we we tend to just kind of glance over we say oh yeah peter's the one that he kept, took his eye off the ball you know remember that lesson but when you take your eye off the ball god's still there so so you can call back out to so him. does that mean like when we're stumbling and stuff like that are we supposed to turn back to jesus and look to yes, jesus <laughs> definitely <laughs> You know, I don't think we have to learn to, you know, we don't have to jump out on a waves and yeah. out of a boat to, <laughs> well, to start thinking but, that we need to turn to Jesus. But in any little circumstance or any big circumstances, that we probably still need to. And, and honestly, uh, we should be keeping our eye on him the whole time. Exactly. But when, but we, act, when we're we realize human. we're not. And yeah. so we're going to stumble on that matter. Right. Exactly. And so we need to to realize when we come to that realization, hey, uh, we, uh, we stumble on that. Right. We need to, you know, get redirected, and the only way to do that is to turn back to so, Jesus. So, just real quick, you guys have on page one fourteen in your quarterly. There's the fill in the blanks. We love this part. The it's fill awesome. In the blank. Like going uh, back to school here. But God is omnipotent. One of those words I have troubles with. But God is omnipotent, and God is all powerful. Is all that saying? Now, right. this God that's, uh, you know, that we see that made the waves, made the water in Genesis uh, one one through ten. You know, he has, God has power and authority over the universe he created. From the largest solar system to the smallest particle, as Christians, we rest in the belief that God, who has all power, is good, and we gain great comfort by knowing that an all-powerful God is working for our good and joy. So the fill in the blanks is authority created and good and that's on page 114 of your quarterly so go ahead and fill in those blanks so something you can go back and reference later on look at remind you of, of mm. where we need to place, be placing God his authority and the fact that you know he, he he not only created these things he has power, power over, over them. them so yeah and that and and you know just because our freedom of choice we forget right you know that we, we we don't look to him knowing that he does have the power over everything including our lives if we allow, if we allow that to happen so okay sorry okay <laughs> so let's uh look at our last point here that jesus deserves worship as the powerful son of god and that's going to be matthew 14 32 through 36. when god got when oh sorry when they got out of the boat the wind ceased nice <laughs> <laughs> 
Then those who in the boat worshipped him and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the shore again. Okay, Gennesaret. Sure. That's about the best I can do with that. Sorry, guys, if uh, you know the true way to say that. When the men of that place recognized him, they alerted the whole vicinity and brought to him all who were sick. They begged him that they might only touch the end of his robe, and they may be, and, and as many as touched, it were, uh, were healed. So they begged him that they might only touch the end of his robe, and as many as touched it were healed. Yeah. So. All right. So we're looking here now. Apparently, Jesus didn't stop the storm until after they got out of the boat. Because it yep. tells us right there. When they got out of the boat, the wind ceased. Right. So they had to travel the rest of the way to the shore before they, uh, the storm ended. All right. And then this is like an important moment here in verse 33. Because then those in the boat worshipped him. And said truly you are the Son of God now we have had the prior to this point in uh, the interaction of the disciples and Jesus we have had them acknowledge his divinity say he is the Christ say he is the Messiah recognize him as the Son of God but this is the first time that they worshiped him Correct. as the Son of God yeah together yes um, and, and they've seen lots of miracles going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, even in the fear in the bowl at that moment and stuff like that, I'm sure they're tired and, and being human, they're weak, going to stuff. But but they have seen and are going to see lots of miracles. And not all the miracles are written in the Bible, I'm sure. Not mm -hmm. everything that was going on in that teaching is written in the Bible. Right. You know, and, and God, uh, Jesus probably had to repeat many things because sometimes it's hard to believe the first time you hear stuff. So, but a lot of things are happening and which, you know, I don't know what miracle is your favorite. Walking on water is pretty cool. Yes. You know, the resurrection, obviously awesome. Yeah. Um, the blind can see, the lame can walk, the, the, the lepers. Sorry. <laughs> you know, one of the ones I like is the centurion that comes and asks Jesus for the healing for his child yeah. that is sick. And so we're seeing someone that's not even of the same faith. You know, but recognizing Jesus' authority. Yeah. The the water turned to wine. Yeah. Wow. That's that's not even a you know, something that's going to heal someone necessarily. Right. And uh but God you know, it's you know, a Jesus small cared detail that, much. Yeah. that Jesus cared about you, these people enough that he was willing to do take care of that. And, and it's the, like when we pray for him to find our keys. And the human things are so cool too. Yeah. You could see that he is human. Mm -hmm. He he's tired, he's crying hungry. at Lazarus's death. He, he and, did you know, uh, showing emotion, he prayed, uh, turning over the tables in the temple. Things, mm -hmm. things going on in his life, and, and and makes you understand that not only was he fully God, but he was fully man, and uh, he knows everything that we're walking through, mm -hmm. every circumstance, right. Right. and we should be able to go and be a part of that. But well, miracles in here are incredible, and um, the fact that they just omitted. You know that he truly is he, he is the well son of God. yeah and that they worshiped him and you know what happened right there in that portion of the story you know we see Jesus walking on water Peter's attempt to join him his doubts Jesus saving him and then their confession of who Jesus is and their worship that's the same thing we see in churches today in the past and going forward is that um, affirmation and claiming that Jesus is the Son of God and worthy of worship right and that's really the key to being saved for all those that might be listening that that don't have this relationship that we're talking about with the Lord Jesus Christ that's what you have to do is you have to come to a realization that he's the only solution to your sin yeah. all right and then the last part of it of this verse is they're talking about the men uh, that come from Gennesaret and they recognize who Jesus is and right. his power. Yeah, and um, They don't keep it a secret. They tell Everybody 
Yeah, so this is kind of like the, 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 the circus show that's going on, you know, the entertainment part. And I don't mean that in, a, in like a light Yeah, that kind of seems callous the way you're way, saying it there. <laughs> but, but because of the miracles that he was doing, the word spread around. And so they're coming out because, you know, not not because of what God's trying to, Jesus is trying to do. And that's eventually, um, you go to the cross and uh, die for our sins. They're, they're going out there because they know that he's you know fed the 5,000 with loaf of bread and the blind can see and the lame can walk and all these miracles are happening and so they want to come out and maybe see a miracle or even if they're but if they're sick or have family that's sick you know they want to see them get healed as well right because so, they knew that Jesus was the great physician and right. the one that could heal all sickness because right. he has control over all creation so um, we've talked about that one I'm off on where we are Okay, so how have you experienced the power of Jesus so you can share his good news with others? Okay, so one of the things um, that I think about, you know, is one, I was I was saved as a as an adult. Yeah. Uh, a young parent. And um, you know, when one day at while I was teaching vacation Bible school. Brother Joe was leading the um, the kids through the ABCs, and I realized, hey, that describes me. I haven't done that, and uh, so, you know, I prayed, and I knew that that was settled from that moment forward, and uh, so, so that's you know my uh, my testimony in a nutshell. But um, you know, Jesus, he he saves us and he takes care of us you know provides for our needs um so many times time and again james and i have seen him provide for something or take care of something that we are concerned about he, even in times of doubt yeah you know even he, when he, we're he thinking has... okay psh, i don't know what's gonna happen absolutely and so now i'm at the place where sometimes in certain circumstances i can say to someone i don't know what's going to happen but i know god's going to do something beautiful with it right and I mean, I think it's natural for us to doubt from time yes. to time. Yeah. I don't think that, you know, being human, being after the fall, uh, everything else that goes on in our lives today and so much of our lives is as an environment of the world that's just coming down on us all the time. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so there's times that when things don't seem to be going out right, right. that we've take our eyes off the ball yes we do and we start thinking about the wind that's blowing us around instead of on jesus that's going to take us through the storm and bring us to the other side so he provides for all my needs uh he helps me be content in all these circumstances that we walk through and that's only if I remember that I, I need to keep looking to him and yes. I have to remind myself to we do, do that we have to say um, okay and Fall on the way go back to the, the solitude and the prayer <laughs> because that's the times that you might slow down enough just to hear Jesus say I'm here I'm here yeah. Yeah, so in this passage uh, we're just going to kind of sum things up here in this passage today we've seen that Jesus is sovereign over right. all of life's circumstances okay he calls us to be courageous and to act in faith in all of our life's circumstances all the storms that we go through he calls us to that okay and he deserves to be worshipped as the sovereign son of God right we have some things that you guys can apply to your life um, things you can think about you know yeah. don't, don't answer right? this out loud because I don't want you guys to you know someone else to hear it you know <laughs> I'm teasing how does the power of Jesus as the son of God instill faith in you for facing life circumstances how does the power of Jesus as the son of God instill faith in you for facing life circumstances, mm -hmm. you know, just like the um, once the disciples in the boat saw all the things going on, you know, it was reinstilling the faith that they had in Jesus as the Son of God. So, same thing we need to have. Question number two would be: What are some ways your Christian community can help one another keep your eyes on Jesus? And That's you know, that accountability yeah, we talked coming, about. Coming and from being a, part of a community the, of the, believers, the minister of education and the Sunday school part. <laughs> You know that's what we're here to do. I mean, mm -hmm. there's an there's an outreach, yes, but there's also an inreach, and we're supposed to be um, encouraging each other, lifting each other up, and that's the important 
part of having that group they call you know because without that group um, if you go to just you and that's going introvert to extrovert and stuff like that uh, it, it's hard to have people that are going to help you walk through this so during those times of doubt there's other people that have faith to carry you through it and there might be times that other people around you may have doubt and you're going to help them help through them that through. because exactly. of, of your faith and, and sometimes people go through different time and things in their life and one stronger at that time one stronger at their time but there's there should be someone that you should be pouring into and there should be someone that's pouring into you just about all the time right and and this will be besides your uh, um, your spouse you know sometimes that happens in a little bit but you know there should be an addition to that and um, it does uh, help when someone's pouring into you as well how will you use your personal experience of spiritual restoration through faith in Jesus to pursue the spiritual goods of others by telling them about Jesus? Now, I need to call Lifeway on that question because that's really long. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so basically, this is, how does this affect your witness? Right. So uh, we always talk about journaling, and I have been very good at journaling. I do have some journaling going on here and there, but you know, you look back in the experiences because sometimes you know we forget. And, and we get caught up in the emotions and the environment that's going on at that moment. And all we have to do is go back and look at that journal and say, oh yeah, our, Jesus was definitely here. He, yeah. Here, you know, he was working through this with me here. And you don't he have took to care of that there. work on, re, you know, yeah. <laughs> rely on this, which doesn't always work well. Doesn't always work well, especially <laughs> when we get through everything. Um, but yeah, that's one of the ways I think you know your personal experience and you can share that with others yeah. and bring them along too anyway all these questions are on page 116 of your quarterly go ahead and look them up you know think through them pray through them uh, you know this stuff is to make you draw near to God yeah draw near to God an action and you know do the things that the scriptures say don't mm -hmm. just be readers of the scriptures but doers of the scriptures as James not me but, but the book of James does all right, so let's go ahead and close the prayer. Thank you guys for being a part of this. Um, you know, the last few times we've been doing some Explore the Bible stuff. It's been a while since so we'll be back in the Gospel Project. Most of all, thank you for pu pu putting up with Holly and me. Uh, my my <laughs> word stumbling, my uh, silliness sometimes, my passion sometimes. I know there, there's times we may offend you in one way or another, but um, we're just pursuing God, trying to bring others with us. Um, trying to show Christ in us everything we can and sometimes our own human people get in the way so we love all of you we appreciate right. you all being and uh, obedient we and we miss you so much um, you know whenever you feel comfortable come back come back the Sunday schools are meeting right now we're meeting in a couple of classes social and distancing super Sunday night start super tomorrow. Sunday night is Sunday night obviously and four to seven, uh, four to seven. Bible school. so children grandchildren bring them along get Neighbors. them there register you can register, register that on, online at the web page space so yeah we're trying to keep that social distancing we're trying to follow every guideline that we need to right. keep people safe but we think it's important for you know the kids to continue on in the Bible study we youth is going to start up this next Wednesday yep. as far camp as experience. I mean it's already started but we're going to do the camp experience we're gonna bring some of the camp stuff from Falls Creek this year even though they didn't have it they put get get some stuff to us and we're going to have some prizes for that and hopefully we can figure out a game that we could do social distancing in but still have <laughs> yeah. fun we're still working on that but we want to see you anyway let's get together you know social distance but be able to talk and let's get going again. Let's get yeah, this uh, let's, whole, uh, you know, let's get uh, the ball rolling, the the wheels going again in the church. I mean, there's several of you that's been back, and that's awesome. But I think uh, we need to be focusing on reaching others, evangelizing, discipling, and let's get that going because no need to wait anymore. And even where you're at, you can continue focusing on that and working through it even in social distancing yeah even, even being safe which we want you to be and yeah. even in the situation you're in right now you can still do things that's not only going to grow red bud but, but it's also going to grow disciples evangelize the lost and encourage those that are having problems yeah and other people can encourage you as well so dear and father lord just uh, bless this time that we had together let us apply it to our hearts, our hands, and our feet, 
And Lord, let us, all this knowledge you give us, let us be wise with it in our own life and let us share it with others so they can be wise as well. Lord, lift up our spirits during this week. Be with the, the leadership of the church and the leadership of our country. Mm. Lord, we pray for all these things that are going around us right now that just makes everything look crazy. Let all those distractions be taken away. Help us focus on you. Help us focus on you. Lord, let us keep the eye on you and let all the distractions be taken away. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, we love you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>